<clears throat> yeah, so that uh, recording was lost. You know, when it, at the time of saving, it got lost. So that part of the recording is gone. So we better have remembered. <laughs> yeah. The whole session? That whole session is gone, yeah. Sometimes when you try to save it, it lose. I, I, I don't know. Yeah. It's. I think there's a problem when I try to save it with the PowerPoint is in presentation mode. I should exit from it and then try to save it, I think. Anyway, that's gone. <clears throat> okay, so now we look at the corrective maintenance process, right? So first we looked at the organization elements, organization levels in, uh, you know, plant maintenance and in customer service. Customer service was a small part. Right, then we looked at some of the basic concepts of plant maintenance. Right, what are all the technical objects to be maintained? So we saw that the technical objects were equipment, functional location, serial numbers. Right, those are the three kinds of things that may require maintenance. In fact, only equipment and functional location really require maintenance. But the two additional concepts were serial numbers and the concept of maintenance bills of material. Right? That's really what we saw. And then we saw the details of how functional locations are hierarchically defined and how you assign a structure indicator to know exactly where in the hierarchy a particular functional location resides. Right? And then we saw the distinction between equipments and serial numbers. Right? The serial numbers allow us to specifically identify pieces of equipment. And finally, we saw that equipment can be connected to a material if we want to do inventory management, right? And we also saw the fact that regular material bombs can also be used for maintenance, right? We saw that when you've got many, many pieces of identical equipment for which you've got a bomb, then there's no sense in keeping a separate bomb for each of those units. You just keep one and then you just use the same one for all of them. The way to do that, of course, is to create a material bomb and then link it to each of those pieces of equipment. Okay, and the important thing also to note is that uh, every serial number has its own equipment master. Right, every equipment serial number has its own master record. Right, the reason being that we want to maintain, uh, keep track of maintenance history and things like that by individual unit. Okay, so those were all some of the points that we spoke about in this, uh, that, that in those two lessons. So now we look at the corrective maintenance process, uh, just like sales order process, purchase management process, or uh, manufacturing process. You've got a corrective maintenance process, and the corrective maintenance process also goes uh, like before. So there's something called as a maintenance notification, right? Notification is when you realize that there is a need for maintenance, right? Somebody reports a problem or uh, whatever it is, okay? You've come to recognize that there's some fault. And the whole process begins with a maintenance notification. And once you've received a maintenance notification, there's some kind of planning that goes on. Right, and of course, the context for maintenance notification could be a technical object, meaning you say uh, it's possible that you say there is a malfunction in this functional location. Or there's a, yep. Yeah. That, then there's no notification. Preventive maintenance is a totally different process. Okay, there's a whole preventive maintenance process that takes place. Yeah. Would you get a notification when it's time to do the maintenance for preventive though? No, notification is for, you know, when there's a problem and it's reported and then it's solved. Okay, this is like a problem report. Okay. The, the, correct, the preventive maintenance process is different. Okay. okay, here we are looking at really corrective maintenance. Right? That's what, yeah. No, here? Okay, slightly different terms, but the intent is the same. Okay, so notification is when you're notified that there's something wrong. Now, it's possible that along with the notification, you may, uh, you know, you may get what is the technical object for which this notification is being sent, right? That is, you might have a technical object like uh, a functional location or an equipment or a serial number more specifically, right? Or it may be just a general problem report that says, you know, this room is overheating. Right? It's possible. So you may not know exactly what is the, you know, which 
equipment or which technical object is malfunctioning. You may not know that, right? That is also possible in a notification, right? It's not necessary that you have to know which object is malfunctioning before you report a problem, okay? So it's possible that uh, that's what it is. Uh, and then of course, there's the planning that goes on for it, which is the basic idea is from the notification, we figure out what needs to be done. Uh, you know, it, it may not be obvious what needs to be done. In some cases, it might be that, uh, you know, this motor stop working. But then uh, you, you, you may have a clearer idea, but otherwise it may just be, there's some general problem, so you go figure it out. That's all the planning process. And the output of that is a maintenance order. Okay, so once again, like a purchase order, production order, sales order, is a maintenance order. And the next thing, of course, is you want to, uh, you know, take charge of the process, release the order, which is, you know, you could say controlling, scheduling, uh, which is basically plan executing the whole process. Okay, so you release the order, and once the order is released, then the usual things happen. Uh, you know, you may you need to, it may reserve materials, all of those kinds of things can happen. You know, capacities, because you need people to do the work, or you may need machines to do the work. So, yeah. Not the execution, it's the uh, prior to the execution, the release, right? You make sure that everything is available and then you release the order. That's the idea here. Uh, and then of course comes the actual work execution. Okay. So this is for all of these things, uh, availability check, capacity leveling, etc. And then there's execution, somebody goes and actually does the, does the work. And as part of this execution, you may have planned material withdrawal and also unplanned material withdrawal right because it's a it's a problem that's been reported you made an initial diagnosis you went and started trying to fix the problem but then you realize you need something that wasn't planned for right so that is unplanned material withdrawal so planned and unplanned material withdrawal could take place and the work gets complete and like yeah. always they enter con uh, you know confirmations right confirmation just like in production at the end of it you enter a confirmation or a warehouse movement at the end of it there is a confirmation similarly at the completion of this work also there is a confirmation that is entered okay so that's the completion of the process and then once again just like all orders there is a process of settlement of the order right cost was incurred somebody has to bear it so that's the settlement of the order so this is the general broad corrective maintenance process and uh, the notes they point out that this process is amenable to SAP workflow just like many other processes really that we have looked at in the sense that when one step is complete there is work for the next set of people right so there is a workflow that is involved and the uh, SAP workflow system can help in that in scheduling that okay just like we saw work lists in sales order processing right so same thing okay so the structure of a maintenance notification looks like this so you've got the header which has got the usual things, uh, you know, the date, time, description, etc. Uh, the header may also have optionally, the header may indicate which is the technical object for which this notification has been created. Okay, so it may have an equipment, a serial number, or a functional location, etc. Uh, etc. Et okay, and of course, things like where it happened and then what is the current status, meaning is it still working or uh, has it come to a standstill? Any of that kind of information. Okay, so that's the uh, notification. Then you've got notification items because part of the notification might be not just one item, but there could be several items. Okay, so it's even possible that your notification may involve multiple technical objects. May not be just one. Okay, but you put one object in the header, and then you could put lots of objects in the uh, item level as well. No, no, you, you might, oh, you're saying if there's only one item, there may not be, no, no, you'll always have at least one item. Okay, here you're just indicating what the object is, but the actual details and stuff you'll find here, right? So cause of damage, damage location, all of that you'll see here. Okay, and then there are two other things in the items, which is activities, okay, that is uh, work that was performed 
on the notification. Okay, because uh, the, the notification gets updated after people go and perform work and so on. They update it and say we did this, this happened, etc. That's what activity is. Fast is work that still remains to be done. So initially you'll have a bunch of tasks to say these are all the things you need to do. You carry out some of the tasks and enter activities as you complete them. But as you do the work, you may realize that there's more that needs to be done. Right? Because you go there, you find out this is the case, you try to do it, and then you realize, oh, this is broken, that's broken, this is not there, etc. So you add additional tasks. Go. Okay. So, uh, so initial tasks that were created plus any additional tasks that came up as you tried to do the maintenance work. Okay, that's what is all the structure of the notification. So the new tasks that you find out do not create a whole new notification. They don't, they don't. It's part of because it's part of the same work. So work performed and work to be performed. <clears throat> right Now there's just one small note that they put in the book that uh, see there's a maintenance order would be created based on the notification as well. Okay, And the maintenance order will have again items which record what are all the things that need to be done. right? And then the maintenance order items can be tracked much more solidly. What they're pointing out in the book is there might be some companies who choose not to use the maintenance order at all. Right? They just say we might make do with maintenance notification. Because notification has a it has a way for you to find out what needs to be done. It has a way for you to keep track of what you've already done. Right? So they may say this is enough for our purpose. We don't need anything more detailed. Right? So they may not want to use a maintenance order at all. And just stick with the notification. But if you do that, then you know, all this cost tracking and things like that, which go with the order, they miss out. Right? Because the maintenance activity costs money, and you may want to settle the order, like we saw earlier. Right? If if you don't, if you just come, if you just manage with notification, then you lose all of that capability. That's what the book is pointing out. So just keep track of that. What's the maintenance order again? Sorry. What is that? What's the maintenance order again? No, the make. See, if you go back to the previous step. See, you see, first the notification arrives, then you plan for it and create an order, then you release the order and get the work done, and then you settle the order. But some people say, we just make do with this alone, because this seems to be, this has a lot of capabilities. Right, but then they can't do some other standard things that an order does. Okay? Okay, so uh, when you have a maintenance notification, remember we said there would be the objects, the technical objects for for which maintenance is required, right? Those are called as reference objects for maintenance notifications. Okay, so the reference objects for maintenance notifications can be any of these things: material with serial numbers, functional location, equipment, or it could be just an assembly. It could be a part of an equipment, right? It's, it's, you've got an equipment and it's got a bomb, so some part of the equipment also you could say is what uh, needs to be maintained. Or of course, like I already said, it's possible that your notification has no object at all because you couldn't specifically associate the problem with any object. Okay. Or alternately, uh, if the object for which a maintenance requ is required is not managed by our company. Okay. It's possible that you've got some object which you have not created as an equipment or a functional location or something but it requires maintenance anyway, right? So then in the notification, there's no way you can put that because that's not in our system. But you still need to do the work, yeah? Right, so I understand that, but if there's still no object, how would you receive notification? Meaning? So you can receive notifications from those three with the honeycomb uh, mm -hmm. shapes, or the octagon, or whatever they call And then you have, or no objects, right? So how would you receive a notification if there's no object? No, no, no. See, there is a there is a real object, but the notification doesn't mention the object. That's what we mean. Okay, the the reference object is not there. Okay. Oh, you're saying there's no object. What's the problem? Okay. Um, what's the difference between material, material number, and equipment? Yeah, I don't know why they have said that. See, sometimes, see, I think the problem is one of how detailed the notification is. So, so they may say the pump in the clarification plant is not working. 
in which case it's just equipment pump okay. right but pump number 101 is not working then it becomes with serial number okay. right? i think that's really what the distinction is meaning at the time you receive the notification they may not mention the serial number okay. or it might not have a serial number okay it's possible okay so in the notification there is a hierarchy right so you've got functional location equipment and within the equipment you've got assembly and what we're saying is if the notification references an assembly right as it's possible then the system is going to find the corresponding equipment and functional location and put that in right uh, so the point is the you know the details of what kind of things are to be specified in the object that's what we're saying in the notification the system can do some inferencing and put uh, stuff in this okay so you could have a maintenance notification that just mentions a functional location or it mentions a functional location plus equipment plus assembly the notification refers to all of these or it may just equip, mention, mention the equipment with or without any assembly. In other words, when somebody gives the notification, they can be as general or as specific as they want. Right? We cannot always say this level of detail has to be provided. Okay, So we are just seeing here what are all the various possibilities that the system allows. Right? Or it, they may mention a material number with serial number, it's very specifically, or nothing. You know, there's a problem. That's all. Okay. So, uh, those are all the different possibilities. Okay. So, now, uh, there are many different ways in which we can create notifications, uh, uh, maintenance orders. Okay. So, here you see the example, you can directly create a maintenance order. That's possible. Nobody says there has to be a notification first. Right. So, the notific in other words, there may not be an official notification document. Somebody may report a problem over the phone or something and then you create an order and start working on it. Why? Because you know the work has to be done. Okay, it's possible. So that is one thing. But the more common process would be that there is a notification and based on that you create an order. Right? Or there are many notifications, you combine them into an order. We've seen that quite often. Right? Or you first enter an order, right? And then as Work is performed, right? We said activity. Yeah. Question. This is where I was going. But is there any rule for the combinations of, a, of these maintenance orders? I mean, there has to be some logical rules, obviously. You, know, you won't combine highly unrelated things. Okay. So here we're just looking broadly at the at the flow. Okay. Uh, so here is in this case, you first created an order, you started doing the work, but then you started entering activity reports, right? You said we did this, we did this, and these additional work came up, etc. Right? So to record all of those, the system will create a maintenance notification, right? Retrospectively create a notification and record all of that information there. Okay, so that is also possible. Here's where we are talking about preventive maintenance, right? Planned uh, maintenance orders. Right? Remember, you were asking. Will, will there not be a notification for preventive maintenance? In preventive maintenance, obviously there is a different process like MRP that's running and that process generates maintenance items. Okay, So those are not part of maintenance orders. Uh, they first it creates a maintenance item which are then combined into a maintenance order and then executed. Okay? So that's those are all the different ways in which maintenance orders could come about. Right? So this is coming from a preventive uh, planned maintenance, I would say, not preventive, but planned maintenance, whose purpose is usually preventive. Okay. Why would you 